Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at joanne.com. This is a bonus video today as we're gonna do a matching pillow to go with your crochet textures and bobble blanket. Now this is a really neat idea. It's bobbles, but done in a diamond formation. When the light hits this particular pillow, the pillow is 14 inches by 24. It's a rectangular pillow. It looks absolutely amazing. And I did mine in sea spray and it matched exactly to my guest room. So I was really quite excited. So this is a matching pillow to go with that Afghan if you would like to play with that and today we're going to get ourselves started so let's head on into the studio and thank you so much to joanne today we're going to do the bobble textures crochet pillow and this is actually matching the particular afghan for the stitch long for fall 2020 done in three ways just like the afghan but they are done in solid colors so except for the version three that's a variegated yarn so what we have here is that it's a diamond bobble texture concept that we're going to be doing it's what we kind of learned already in the blanket so if this is the second part of that you're going to expand to you're really just going to expand your skills that you already know and if you're just doing the pillow and haven't done the blanket then you will learn something new today so you can see that it's either been done in velvet freesia or Symphony, so Bernat Velvet, Bernat Freesia, or Bernat Symphony, and I love the Bernat Symphony a lot. So I've actually done some prep work ahead of time, and let me tell you a little bit more about this, and then we're gonna get started today. So you will notice that the front cover of this pillow, the pillow is uh, 14 inches by 24 inches, and what we have here is that the front face is actually one solid unit. Now the back uh, pieces here there's actually two and they overlap each other so you can remove this pillow out so that if you have to wash anything you're able to take that pillow out and deal with it. So that's something that you will see. So if you do not want something like this um, we're gonna talk about it when we get to there you can do a flat piece panel in the back if you want to and permanently put your pillow inside and then you don't have to worry about doing that. So ahead of time uh, light, late last night I actually did the back work of this because it's actually really quite simple and today we're going to start the bobbling work. So let's just show you what it looks like. I'm using a Bernat Symphony today called Sea Spray. It's blue and it's really quite wonderful. So here's the pillow here. This is one side and the other side just overlays like this when we go to put it together to the front face and so this will be a pocket and you'll be able to put your pillow inside and then it will stay in the frame. So you can see it looks really quite pretty and it's something that I really quite enjoyed making. So I'm going to give you some options when we're going to do this. So one of the tips I will leave for you right now is that when you're doing this a uh, ribbing is the first thing that you do. I actually do both of them at the same time. So I'm kind of manic in that way that I want them to be exactly identical. So when it says to keep on going after you make the ribbing I don't I actually fasten off and then I do the second one and then I overlay them on top of each other to make sure they're exactly the same size and then I start with fresh yarn and then build my way out uh, one on each. So you can see that they're kind of slightly different. So that's actually really quite fun and if you really look at the colorway of this <laughs> This is kind of neat, right? So you can see how I went across and then I finished and then I picked it up and I started again. So that's kind of, it's not cheating, it's fabulous. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna start with the front face. We're gonna look at the diagram next. So here's the diagram on page number two and I'm gonna take you through rows number one through 17 on this today. Now when we do this we're gonna do it one time and then we're gonna repeat it three more times in order to get to the length that we need. So if you wanna customize it and change the, the width of it for a different size pillow you can pretty much do that as well. So when we go to start this is actually really quite easy and you're going to notice that when we do the back end of this uh, the back side it's going to match exactly. So um, it's really kind of fun and the, and the backing is actually just single crochet so it's nice and simple so it's all the really the if it's if I'm gonna say it's more complicated it's gonna be on the front side for sure but it's actually really quite easy and you see the bobbles are really quite spread out so it's not like you're gonna be bobbling all the way through uh, this thing really intensely. So without further ado we're gonna need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook and I'm going to be using Bernat Symphony today and we're going to begin. So let's start on our chain. So let's begin today and we're going to start with a slip knot. This is an easy level uh, project that we're going to be doing today. So we want to chain a total of 38. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and go all the way to 38 for me and meet me back here in just a moment. 
Now that I have my 38 on the hook I wanna go second chain from the hook and use the back hump only and I wanna single crochet all the way across. By using the second chain from the hook you will notice that we'll have 37 stitches when we go across. So when you look at the back panel that we're going to do later on you will notice that it's uh, 37 stitches across so they match each other exactly. So single crochet in the back hump of the chain all the way back and this is row number one. Now that we're getting started in our project I want to draw your attention to row number three. You notice that there's no dots in there. That means it's just a straight single crochet row. So you'll see every other row is just a straight single crochet row when we go to do that. So essentially uh, it says third and alternative wrong side rows are just one single crochet in each. So really the, the concentration is on the even rows. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 and etc. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial when I'm going to take, uh, take you across I'm gonna give you the instruction and then I'm gonna tell you just complete the next row which is just a single crochet row. So essentially I will see you at the beginning of 2, 4, 6 and etc. So let's uh, get moving and let's do row number 2. So let's begin row number two. We're gonna chain up one. You can follow the diagram at any time and you're going to do one single crochet in each of the four, the first four. So one, two, three and four and then we're gonna do the make a bobble. So the bobble's in the next one. So when, this one here is a treble bobble. So you're gonna wrap twice and then going into the same one. Pull through, pull through two and two and hold it and you wanna do that three times. So that was one of three. So wrap twice into the same one. Pull through two and two and hold it. And one more time. Just like that. So it's very extreme bobbling really. So once you have all four loops pull through and then you're going to carry on into the next stitch. So in this case it's one single crochet in the next eleven. Okay so just continue. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. Now we're gonna do a bobble again. So let's just start. So do a bobble in the next one. If you've already done the blanket then you'll know how to do this bobble for sure. Once you have your four loops pull through and in this case here we're in the middle of the, the pillow. So we're gonna single crochet in the next three only. So one, two and three and then we're gonna bobble into the next one. And once you have that done then we're just gonna go back and we're going to single crochet in the next eleven. So make sure you do push these bobble, bobbles out to the front side. So that was one of eleven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven and then we're going to do the final bobble of the row. Okay pull through all four and then the final four will each be a single crochet. So that really gets our pattern established clearly and then what I need you to do this is the next row coming up. So just single crochet. So chain up, turn, chain up one, one single back and then I'll see you at the beginning of row number four. So this is what it looks like so far and let's continue our journey into row number four next. So turn, chain one, one single head all the way back and I'll see you on the beginning of number four. Now that I've single crocheted all the way back we're going to start row number four. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna single crochet in only in the first two this time. So one and two and the diamonds are going to shift outward. So the next one is going to be a bobble. So let's do a bobble. I don't wanna line this video with a lot of yapping so that you can concentrate even more. 
Okay, so you got the bobble in there and now we're going to single crochet in the next 15. So let's please do that. So the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So the next bobble should technically be right in the center of the other two, which it is. So we're gonna make a bobble there. And then I'm gonna give you some verbal instruction to get to the end of this row. This one's an easy one. Not that they're not all easy but okay. So we're gonna make the bobble. So now you're going to single crochet the next 15 and then put a bobble in and then single crochet the remaining two that are on there. So please do that and I'll see you at and then what I want you to do is turn your work and single crochet back and I'll see you at the beginning of row number six. So it's 15 and then bobble and then single crochet the remaining two and I'll see you at the next starting point number six. So let's begin row number six. It's the same as number two. So it's right where you see them. So the diamond is literally gonna be building back in on an angle. So let's uh, begin and I'll just keep repeat. I'll repeat the instructions for number two right now. So we'll just chain up one and one single crochet in the first four. Then we're going to bobble. And then we're going to do the next 11 single crochets. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And it should look very close to if not perfectly down. So then the next one is a bobble. remember how many are separating those bobbles. If you said the answer is three, great. You may have looked at the instructions and that's okay too because that's the whole point of the stitch longs to help you to learn. So there's three and then another bobble. And then how many stitches separate this bobble from the next one? Any guesses? Okay, it's 11. So what I want you to do is that I want you to put in the next 11 as single crochet, then a bobble and then finish the row with single crochet. So if you look at this one, you can see where it's going to be and then the last three are single crochets or the last four are single crochets if you're keeping that count. So please do this. This is row number six. Turn your work and then begin to do uh, um, the next row and then I will see you on row number eight next. So let's begin row number eight. So row number eight you're going to notice that the diamond uh, bobbles are going to be equally spaced from each other. So it's growing in this formation here. So where they are going to land is actually equally spaced. So I'm going to give you that instruction. So we're gonna just chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in the next six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now here's the repeat instruction. So you're going to bobble into the next one. Okay and then there's going to be a total of seven single crochets and we have to do that three times. So there's seven single crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So see where you are. So it's gonna take you and make you do a bobble on this part of the diamond.
and then you're going to single crochet the next seven and then do another bobble and then crochet the next seven and do another bobble and then you will just single crochet the last six that are left. Then turn your work, single crochet and then I'll see you on row number 10 next. Okay, I've just single crocheted my way back and now I'm getting more and more. So let's begin row number 10. Chain up one, one single crochet in the first eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Then we're going to do a bobble. You see everything lining up perfectly. So it's great. I haven't had any stitch counts yet uh, that are a problem, so which is great. And we're gonna continue the journey. So we've got a bobble. And then we're going to single crochet the next three. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to bobble. Once that one's done we have to get all the way over to here. So to do that the next 11 are single crochet. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. And then we're gonna bobble. And do you know how many bobble are single crochets in between this bobble and the next one. If you're not sure just look at what you just did for spacing. Once that one's done it's three because that's what we did before. So one, two, three. When I mean by did before just earlier in that same row. And then you're going to bobble again. And then you're just gonna single crochet the remaining of these stitches that are left at the end of this row which is the last eight. So if you wanna count it great and if not that's okay too if you're confident in your counting. So it was eight and then I'll see you at the next one. Number 12 just chain up one, one single crochet on the way back and I'll see you on number 12 next. Let's begin row number 12. So you can kind of see where things are happening now. We pretty much have a bobble left that's gotta be in the top point here and that's kind of what we're going to do. So let's uh, begin our journey and chain up one and one single crochet in the first ten. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then as I promised it's right in the center. So it's kind of like an intersection point visually. Okay and then listen to my instruction because there's only one more bobble left. You are going to then single crochet the next 15 which will take you to the middle of the next one and then single crochet the remaining and then turn your work, single crochet back and I'll see you on row number 14 next. So let's begin row number 14. So 14 we're going to expand out so it's exactly what you just did here. Okay so you can see that it's gonna build out again. So I'll take you through that. My pleasure. So number 10 is just chain up one and one single crochet in the first eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we have a bobble. And do you remember how many we're separating this bobble to the next one? Anybody want a Scooby snack? Who knows the answer? It's three. That's right. So go get some cookies from the cupboard. Reward yourself. And then we'll be bobbling in the next one. 
and then do you remember how many that is going to separate this bobble to the next? I don't remember, I'm just kind of looking at the sheet. It's 11. So my notes are always just off camera here that you don't see. So we have 11 that separates them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then you're gonna bobble. And do you remember how many separates this bobble to the next? Yeah, that's right, it's three. So we're just gonna do the next three. So one, two, and three. And then bobble into the next. I love this yarn. I just love how the colors just kind of change each bobble color. Okay, so now you've got a bobble. So you're just gonna single crochet the remaining of this row. Turn your work, single crochet on the way back. And I'll see you on row number 16 next. And the repeat is almost here. So let's begin row number 16. So 16 is the same as the eighth row. So looking backward and uh, what we're going to do it's just start number eight and then the repeat pattern starts after this. So just chain up one and we're going to single crochet in the first six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And, and if you recall, this is the one where the bobbles are equally spaced from each other once you get started. So we're gonna bobble into the next. Okay, and then you're going to uh, single crochet in the next seven. So you'll do that and then bobble and then crochet seven or single crochet seven and then bobble and then seven and then bobble and then finish off at the end with just a single uh, remaining single crochets left. So then I want you to do this then all the way across single crochet on the way back and then the repeat pattern starts again and we start from row number two through 17 all over again and we have to do that three more times. So this is one section so you have two three and four. So what I'm going to do then is that we're going to move on into the back panel next and I'm going to show you how to do that and give you some options. So at this time you're going to repeat rows number two through 17 three more times then do rows number two through six once more and then fasten off. So let's move on and do the back panels. So you have a choice. You can either do the overlay like this so they overlay so the pillow can be taken out or you can do a solid piece unit. If you would like to do a solid piece unit all you need to do is chain 38 and then single crochet second chain from the hook and just go back and forth and single crochet until the face is 24 inches long. Therefore you can use that and match it to the other one uh, to the front face. Now for tutorial reasons I'm going to use a different color right now because my yarn is still attached and I still have the homework to do on the front face panel. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna create the ribs and as I talked about in the beginning of this is that when we do the ribbing, so let me just pull that up and show you. When I did the ribbing I did both at the same time. So it says to do the rib measure at about 14 inches and then just slightly stretched and then start and continue. My issue is that is that when I go to do the second one I don't always get it right and then I do the second one and the second ribbing is not exactly the same because when I pulled it to measure it's different. So what I do is that I fasten off at the end of one ribbing and I start the other one and then I get it and I overlay it making sure that they're exactly the same. So I just look for the bumps and make sure the bumps match and then I fasten off and then I begin. So what we have to do is that when you start this ribbing you just have to equally space 37 single crochets across which then gives you the same count as you have on the front face pillow and then you just have to single crochet so that you have the distance from the ribbing to this to be 14 inches. So you'll you notice that the pillow is only 24 inches so this 14 plus this about an inch and a half is a lot more when you overlay them but that's because you wanna create that pocket so that if it's too small then the back of the pillow could pop out so it has that nice generous overlay. So let's start you off on this. I'm not going to do this whole panel with you. I'm gonna demonstrate how to do it and then you can work it out on your own. So let's uh, begin to do this next. 
So let's begin. I'm using the same color that the real pillow is made out of. It's royal. It's the Bernat Symphony. And what I want to do is I want to chain a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And starting in the back hump of the second chain from the hook. So one, two, just single crochet yourself back. And that'll give you a total count of six stitches. So six stitches is all we need, need to concentrate on for the ribbing. So it's really quick to cross once you get your momentum going. So let's come back and make sure there is six stitches across. Then once you have that established turn your work and then chain one and if you're new to crochet there's always two strands. So you see that there's two strands here. If you go into the one that's closest to you that's the front loop and the one that's away from you is the back loop. So what you need to do for every row now is just concentrate and go into the back loop only. It creates the ribbing. This is what makes it elastic so that it can stretch and you're gonna do a back loop single crochet across. And what you're going to do is just continue to go back and forth until it can measure 14 inches which is slightly stretched. So just don't lay it down and get to 14. Just stretch it a, a little bit and then you have to do the second one as well. So I would do it at the same time. So at the end of the row then what you just have to do is then just fasten off and then start your second one and making sure both the ribbing is exactly the same and therefore you won't have to question that in the future. That's something that I would do if I were you and that's exactly what I did. So just in the back loop only back and forth. Okay. So let's say that we have that done. All we just need to do once you have that 14 inches done and let me just get to the end. You're just, you're just gonna work your way across the one side. So I fasten off and I restart again. So I just start off and with a slip knot and then chain a uh, slip stitch it and then chain one, one single. So all you're just gonna do then is just equally space this out so just equally space and get a total of 37 stitches in there. It took me a couple tries uh, the first time and then once I kind of understood it then you can just go across. Just make sure there is 37 even if you have to put in a, a couple extra at the end to get that number it kind of works its way out. So then turn your work and then the remaining of the face is just going to be single crochet back and forth until the distance from where this ribbing starts. So from here up it's a total of 14 inches. It really did not take me a long time. This is thick yarn. It's a big hook and um, I actually quite enjoyed making it. So this is how the back facing is done. You need a total of two of these uh, to be done and uh, just turn on the TV and just get that done. And then when I come back I'm going to have to finish off my other face and then I'm gonna show you how I'm going to um, put these two together. So all three panels together actually overlay the back and etc. from that point. So this is how you would do the back nice and simple and I will be back in just a moment as we start then to assemble our pieces together. Through the miracle of the internet I have this already done. I do my homework in advance and now it's time to think about putting this stuff together. So here are the panels. We have their front face and we have the two back. So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to turn this over. So let's turn it over to the other side so that the good side is facing down. And so we're gonna concentrate on the back side of this here and we're going to grab one of the panels. So just look at the panel and make sure that everything looks good. Now the ribbing is towards the interior of the pillow like this. Okay and you wanna go right into the edge section and what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna just grab some um, just spare yarn and kinda tie this into position and then I'm going to put the other one into position as well this way. And what we need to concentrate on is that when we go to cross this over that the three panel, uh, panels that come together as they overlap we want to go into all three of those layers. So then this here will be able to slide the pillow in and get the pillow into the inside. So it's just generous because it's flat it looks like there's way too much material but once you stuff this thing it's a completely different monster. So let's uh, just attach the sides here just with some spare yarn so that when we go to crochet then it will hold its position. So let's just begin to attach. So I just got some spare yarn and I want to attach in the corners first. So just going in. So I'm just attaching these with just some spare yarn to hold it. 
So when I'm crocheting around it, it holds its position. If you feel you don't need to do that, then don't. Um, I'm not that confident. So I'm just gonna pull through and then you can just tie it in a nice bow tie if you wanted to. And what I want to do is make sure that I'm getting the pivotal points all marked. So let's get another one here. So see where the three layers, so one, two and three. So I wanna go through all three layers when it gets there. So I wanna do that so then that doesn't shift at all. Okay. And then I wanna do the other one also where the other one finishes. Okay, so I'm just peeling it back and I can see it. So I'm picking them all up. And I'm thinking to my point of view that I just need to pick up these pieces and the corners and therefore I can probably safely go across easily without any issues. So I'm gonna work my way around. So now that I have them all marked and they're all put together, I'm going to turn it to the good side of it so I can see the beautiful work and I'm gonna start on the one corner. So I'm equally gonna space and when I go to single crochet, I'm gonna go right in and right where they've been put together, you have to go through all three of these layers. So we start it so that the front side is facing you. So let's just grab our yarn. The secret is we're only going once around. We are going to do three single crochets in a corner and it'd be better if I used the real crochet hook instead of the other one. So I'm going to go into where I had them joined. I can pull those stitch markers out later. They're just holding it for me and I'm just going to join and I'll finish that corner when I get back. So chain up one and single crochet through both of those. Okay, so then because it's single crocheted across then each the end of each row can be a single crochet. So I want to go there. Did you notice I tossed in the tail end to the inside of the pillow? Mm -hmm. If I can get away with stuff I will. <laughs> so I'm just equally spacing on the end of the rows single crochets. And so it's the corners that I really wanna pay attention to to get three single crochets so I can make that turn. As I'm coming up closer to where all three panels overlap, um, what I wanna tell you is that if you didn't wanna do the panel work and you just decided the last back panel is being just one piece unit, then what you can do is still do this, but then on the last uh, side that's open, you wanna slip in your pillow before you finish. So because there is an opening that's left in this one here, I don't wanna slip in the pillow beforehand. I probably could, but I'm not going to. Okay, so right where that one's marked. So it's gonna go through all three layers and I wanna make sure I get all three layers so that I will hold it. And I am going to move this one out because I think it'll get really tight in there. Perfect. So I'm going through all sections of it. So I'm gonna go through one, two and three, pull it nice and tight and single crochet it all together instead of having to do sewing. So if you don't like sewing that's perfect because there's no sewing involved other than weaving in the tails at the end of each of the panels. So what I want you to do is go all the way around in the corners as you turn. So you're gonna come to the very last stitch and just put in three single crochet and then carry on. So on the ends here the stitch actually matches the stitch and on the sides then basically the, the, the panels all line up perfectly and you just uh, crochet straight across and etc. So I'll see you at the end of this row which will conclude today's tutorial. So I've now just come all the way around and I'm just going to go into that last stitch here. Now where I started was the very corner so just finish that off and put two more single crochets there and then slip stitch to the top of the first one. So let's say uh, we are going to need a tapestry needle in order to finish this off so that you don't have a tail falling out of your pillow especially if it's somewhere that you really want it to be special, especially if you're gonna, really gonna use it too. So
making this pillow, so just get it done. And you just gotta put your hook into the wind. It really does not take a lot of time. And it's something that you can learn for the future. You had options in this that we gave it to you uh, for the back. You could either have the flapping or you could have did a solid. And I think it's great to be able to experiment with ideas when it comes to your creativity, because ultimately you're the artist in the end. So on behalf of my friends over at joanne.com, thank you so much for joining us. And it has been an absolute pleasure. And we hope to see you again real soon with another Stitch Along again in the future. Have a good one. I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd. And please don't forget to use our hashtags of Handmade with Joanne as well as the Crochet Crowd. We'll see you. Bye-bye.